Today is December 16th, 2014, and we are interviewing Mr. Robert Tro Trout, Trout. Trout. Right. at Hinsdale, Illinois. Mr. Trop was born April 1st, right. Easter Sunday, 1923. Right. My name is Cheryl Walker, and I'll be the interviewer. Jen Chakuga will be the court reporter for this interview. Um, Mr. Trop? Yes. You I'm, call me Bob. Okay, I'll call you Bob. Bob, where and when were you, where were you born? Chicago, Illinois. Okay. So have you lived in Illinois all your life? Yes, except for the time I was in the service. Okay. Um, what were your parents' names? Robert and... Uh, no. Your parents. Mary, oh, my parents. Uh, Anton and Mary Trapp. They were also born in Chicago. And did uh, what did your dad do for a living? He worked for the Glidden Paint Company. And was your mother a stay stay at home mother? Yes, she was. Did you have any brothers or sisters? No, I'm the only one. You're the only child. Yeah. <laughs> did your dad serve in the service? No. Okay. Uh, I just he went. His dad went to his final registration, and it was the day the armistice was declared. So they didn't take him. He, we have a postcard at home with that date on it. Um, what were you doing before you entered the service? I was in high school. Did you graduate? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did they draft you? No. No. I enlisted. Okay. What made you decide to go into the service? Well, I didn't want any part of the Army, and I was getting kind of close to being drafted into, into the uh, Army, so I decided I'd enlist in the Navy instead. So I did that. So the Navy took me right away. I don't know why. <laughs> Do you remember when you went down to sign up? Uh, yes and no. That was quite a few years ago. It's kind of vague in my my, my memory. But the uh, uh, reason why I, I, I joined the Navy, I didn't want any part of the Army. So I, I joined the Navy. I enlisted in the Navy. And what war did you serve in? World War II. Okay. And where were you stationed? Aboard a ship. USS Bolivar. Okay. And what what area did you travel on the ship? What area? Uh-huh. Like? In the radio shack. Did, were you in the South Pacific? South, yes. South Pacific, North Pacific, all, all, all areas in the in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. What was your highest rank that you... Seaman first class. Um, where, do you recall your first days of service? Yeah, in uh, Great Lakes, Illinois, where I, where I, uh, where I started my Navy career. That was in uh, 1943, I think. Yes, 43 or 42. These years are, are confusing because there have been too many years since I since I've was acquainted with these areas. That's okay. That's okay. Um, what do you remember about the time that you um, you and you first started your training? Can you tell us a little bit well, about it? Well, I uh, started training it in in the Navy at Great Lakes. I started training there. Boot camp is what they called it. We got our shots and so forth, and our physical and stuff like that. But uh, 
And is that where they issued your uniforms? Oh yes, yeah, at at uh, Great Lakes, I was I issued all my uniforms there. And what what did the uniforms look like? <laughs> like a uniform. <laughs> okay. They were Are, plain. Were they white? I had I had I had a set of whites and I had a blues also. Okay. And. Uh, Got a pea coat, some hats. After your boot camp at Great Lakes, where did you go? Uh, I went to uh, Little Creek, Virginia. And we went to uh, boat training there. We were assigned uh, crews and so forth, and then we were assigned a, a boat. And we trained there. We trained in Virginia. What was your um, advanced training? What was your specialty? Gunner. I was a 50 caliber gunner. I was taught to uh, repair the gun and clean the gun and, and fire the gun also. And uh, more than that, that's about all. Did you um, did you get to fire the gun at all? Oh yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. I also got to ad ad identify the various uh, shells that was put into the gun and so forth. How the gun fired them. And, uh, Were they attached to the ship? Uh, no. The boat was attached to the ship. The gun was on board the boat. The the thirty uh, the LCM, which was stood for landing craft mechanized, and uh, we carried the tank into the beach. That was one of the vehicles that we we uh, took into the beach. So did you carry troops on your ship, and yes. then? Yes, we carried troops on the ship. We carried a uh, couple of thousand troops on, on board our ship also. Mm -hmm. And we took them into the beach. We took them into our, our boats, our landing craft, and put them on, on, on the beach as it was required. Mm -hmm. so. And you were the gunner on that boat? Yes, I was the gunner. What... Um do you remember some of the beaches that you took some of these troops on? Um, now, now, now you're making me think this this uh, offhand. I can't uh, I can't say one particular beach. But we went to uh, various various islands in the South Pacific. And uh, Marianas was, was a group of islands. And uh, of course we were, we were, st were stationed in Hawaii most of the time. So that was, that was good duty, I liked that. Did you um, ever have um get off the ship and do um, have R&R &R on the islands? Uh, no, not as such. No, no, we weren't. We weren't. The only time we were we were on the island was when we were picking up wounded. That was the only time we were, as far as R&R &R is concerned, we had no R&R &R on any of the islands out there. They were all hostile. <laughs> When you picked up wounded, did you bring them back to the ship? Yes, we brought them back to the ship. Did you have a hospital on board, or a... oh, we had a medical team on board. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember how many surgeons we had. Maybe four or five surgeons and uh, army nurses, of course. And uh, we we took we took care of the wounded. And we, fixed them up as best we could 
then when we got to Pearl Harbor, when we came back to Pearl Harbor, then we we left the excuse me the wounded off again, and they went to the regular hospital uh, on in the islands in in the uh, Hawaiian Islands. Okay. Um. When you were in the different islands, or down in the South Pacific, yeah. um, what was the weather like? Warm. Humid. It was, it was nice. I, I like the warm weather. I don't like winter. I hate winter. <laughs> okay. Um, did you... Did you form a lot of friendships on board the ship or yes, with your... Yes, I did. I was, at that particular time, I was also connected to the radio shack. And I formed a lot of friends in with the radio people. And, uh, of course, we had all our, all our boats aboard the ship and all the crews. And I associated myself... With, with most of the most of the crews of the various uh, landing craft, we had uh, can't remember now. We had something like thirty or forty landing craft on board the ship. Hmm. When our, when you talk about landing craft, what do you mean? Uh, LCMs, okay. LCVPs, and stuff like that. Um. Do you re do you did you stay in touch with a lot of your friends that you made on no. the ship? After I left the Navy, no. I got out. I was glad to get in. And glad they got out. <laughs> um, what on the ship? You said you were connected to the radio. Radio Shack, yes. Radio Shack. How were you connected to that? What did you do to be connected? Well, I, I was training to be a radio operator uh, and uh, stuff like that. That's about all. That's, so that that was most of my duties on, on board the ship, taking messages and passing messages out. And Do you remember your admiral on the ship, his name? Or your captain? We didn't have a captain. We had actually. <laughs> it, it was kind of funny. It was like like a boat boot camp for 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 captains, because we had four captains on board the ship. Uh, some of them I recall. Uh, the the last one we had was. Uh, uh, Wendell, I think his name was. I, I I'm not sure about it. I'm pretty sure. He, and we had, we had one of the first captains was Smith, Captain Smith, and uh, the other the other two I, I don't recall their names. It's been too too many years. <laughs> That's a good job though to remember two of uh, two of them. Um, did you have to do like KP duty or anything like that? Yes, when I first got on the ship, I I did KP duty. And I also did guard guard duty too. I was my my station on board the ship was the uh, after crow's nest on board the ship. And so what is that? That was the highest point on the ship. It was like like a lookout point. So that that was that kind of interesting. I would, could see things coming coming into port and so forth and. Things like that nature. Mm -hmm. That would be a pretty good spot to. Well, yeah, yeah. Of course, and then I, when you're when you're up in there, you're kind of all by yourself, so you're talking to everybody else in the various parts of the sh ship. So mm -hmm. we did. What did you did? You have bunks, or did you have hammocks to sleep? No, we in? had bunks. We had we had regular bunks. There were no hammocks. Uh, 
I'm trying to think. No, uh, I was probably in. Uh, we ha we also had bunks besides besides the uh, the uh, just bunks bunks and uh, no hammocks. We didn't have a, I never had. I, I never slept in a hammock. <laughs> did where did you sleep? Were they too high, three high? Uh, on board the ship, I was uh, sleeping uh, five high. I was the fifth one on top. I had the top bunk bed, and uh, like I say, the ship. We had something like, uh, I'm trying to think, something like uh, 3,000 sailors on board the ship. Well, we, most, most of the, uh, most of the crew, like I, I said, we were 3,000, most of them were all connected to the boats. We had 30, 35 men to a boat. We had something like, Thirty, forty boats on board the ship, landing craft. We we had uh, we had four LCMs and the and the, the rest were uh, say we had thirty six uh, LCVPs and they all they all carried a crew. The LCVPs carried a crew of four, and the LCMs carried a crew of five. How was how was the food on the ship? Good. The food the food was good. The food was good. We got got a lot of chicken. We got uh, in fact uh, when the holidays came around, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, we got turkey. And uh, is there anything that you had on the ship that? Maybe you don't eat today because of that time in the military. You mean like K rations? No, I don't. I don't have any K rations anymore. Okay. Um. How did you stay? How staying in touch with your family was that through like mail? Mail. Yeah. And how how often did the mail come? Uh, the mail came whenever he got into port. It was never flown in. The mail was never flown in to us. And uh, we got, we got, I would say we got mail pretty regular. Did you ever go um, past the um, um, equator? Yes. Yeah, did cross the equator. I got a certificate for that. Tell me about the ceremony. Sir, what do you mean the ceremony? <laughs> Beat the heck out of you. What were you called before you crossed the equator? Wait, what do you mean? What was was I... it shellback? Yeah. Okay. All right. You know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> what um, after you crossed the equator? Then what was was your title? If you weren't a shellback anymore, what were you? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember. <laughs> okay. But do you still have the um, paper? Yes. Do you? Oh yeah. Okay. It's hanging up down the basement. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> Um, what did you do for recreation on the ship? Play cards, checkers, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Eat and sleep. Okay. When, um, do you remember or by any chance um, were you notified 
when the USS, um, uh, when your ship was uh, decommissioned? Yeah, we knew it was being being decommissioned because we put it, we brought the ship back to uh, New York, and that's where it got decommissioned was in New York. Did you go on another ship at that time? No. Okay. No. Did you, um, when the ship was decommissioned, did you get anything special for that? No. 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 You didn't get a plaque or? No. No, no hmm. plaque or, uh, I, I know what you're talking about, like a, uh, uh, serving tray or something like that. No. We had nothing like that, no. Was that because you were still in the military? Yeah. And then where did you go from New York? Did you come home? No. We were still on board the ship. The ship. We we never left the ship. We were I was we were considered part of the boat crew. We I was assigned to a LCM which carried a tank into the beach. <laughs> and uh um, do you remember when your military time was finished? Where were you? Somewhere around Australia. And the uh, ship, ship went back to the States then. And then I got off, and then I got mustered out, mustered out of the surface at Great Lakes. How did you get to Great Lakes? How did we get to Great Lakes? Probably by truck. Okay. okay. Did was there a lot of you that mustered yes. out at the same yes. time? Yeah. The truck was full, full of us, full of sailors. Then we, they took us to Great Lakes, and they mustered us out over there. Mm -hmm. okay. um, what did you do after after the service? Did you what did you go straight home and get a job? No, I went to school for a while. And uh, I can't even remember what school that was now. Did you go for a trade? No. No? No, no. Okay. No. This is... I uh, learned, learned, to, learned to type, amongst other things, do paperwork. Mm -hmm. What did you do for a living after um, your service? I, I got a job at Corn Products Refining Company in Argo, Illinois, and I stayed there till I retired from there. Wow. So I spent something like 35 years over there at Corn Products in Argo. Um, are you a member of any veterans organizations? None. None. Have you ever been? Yeah, way back when, back in the uh, early early 40s, after I left the Navy, I was a, a good, a very very good friend of mine was. Uh, his father was, uh, uh, what the heck was he? He was. He was in charge of a post. Hmm. I belonged to that for a while, but I didn't. Our stories didn't match. <laughs> they Did, were talking about World War One, and I'm talking about World War Two. Uh, so. Did you carry anything for good luck while you were on the ship? Carry anything for good luck? No. No. Okay. No, I didn't carry anything for good luck. Okay. Um. 
when did you meet your wife? Was that after service? Yes. Okay. Right? No? We're still in the Navy. Was I still in the Navy when I met you? Did I don't I? know if you want me to interrupt ever or not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so you were still in the Navy. Okay. So you probably got some letters from her. Oh, yes. <laughs> Quite a few. Okay. Um, were there any entertainers that came to um, any of the placer, places that you, um, what, maybe it was in Hawaii, maybe it was in Australia, wherever? Yeah, in Hawaii. We used to call. We used to have what they used to call a beach party, and uh, the Hawaiian Hawaiian people would entertain us. They wouldn't necessarily feed us, but they would in entertain us. But, uh, okay. Um. Where were you? When, do, or do you remember um, where you were at the day the war ended? Yes, I remember that quite well. I was still still aboard the ship and we were still out out, out at sea when when uh, we found out that the war ended. So we all felt very good about that. So then shortly after that we came back. We always came back to uh, uh, San Diego. That was our home port for the ship. And we came back there, and that's where we, we, we left the ship. And then they took us back to, back, back to the East Coast. So. How'd you get back to the East Coast? Did you take train. a train? Yes, train. Mm -hmm. Bunch of bunch of sailors in a train. <laughs> uh, um, have you ever used any of um, your military benefits? Uh, I think I did. When I first got out, I went back to school. And uh, I don't remember how long it how many months I, I used up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't remember, that's, that's going too far back. Okay. How did your military experience affect your life? Do you think, do you think all that training and discipline affected your life any? Uh, I think it did. I mean, it, you uh, you seem to uh, remember more, like remember more of the service. Did you have to have your clothes folded a certain way when you got out of the service? No, I had them in a sea bag. <laughs> I had them all folded in, 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 in my sea bag, and that's how I got them home. <laughs> After you were in the service, did you spit shine your shoes? Did I what? Spit shine your shoes? Yes. Yes, I shined my shoes quite a bit. In fact, it was one of the traits my father taught me was to shine your shoes. So I, I shined my shoes. He was he was a good shoe shiner. He had good shoes, good looking shoes. Um if you were talking to a young person now and they said, Bob, I don't know if I should go into the military, what would you tell them? Well, it all depends what they what they were looking for. Like some people, some some 
personnel would want to fly, that's naturally they, they get in the Air Corps. Or some people would like to travel, they might suggest the Navy. But, uh, I don't know. Do you think it's a good experience for all kids to be in the military? Yes. Yes, I do. But uh, it's 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 hard to say because different people adjust to the military in a different different way all, all the time. Like I, I I had no problem adjusting to the military. I don't know why. Uh, just got in and did my job. That's all. Did what I was told to do. I heard that you recently just received a medal. Can uh, you tell me why you just recently received that medal and what it was? Well, <laughs> now, you're, now you're starting to go way back. Uh, the medal, medal I got. Help me out. What medal are we talking about? It's okay. Can I? Go ahead. Uh, he left the Navy two days before he was supposed to get the uh, Good Conduct Medal, wasn't that it? Oh, Good Conduct, yes. yeah, Good Conduct Medal. And right. when yeah. our grandson was on the Abraham Lincoln, he was on the Tiger Cruise. And my son had arranged for the captain of the Abraham Lincoln, told him about that he was lacking just two days for the Good Conduct Medal. So they gave him, they had a ceremony on the Abraham Lincoln and gave him the Good Conduct Medal. His grandson got to pin it on him or present it to right. him. Very nice. Very nice. That was one of, one of, my, one of my medals. Mm-hmm. Um, you, um, I see that you also um got a silver star well the silver star is on the asiatic pacific medal and that stands for five bronze stars okay okay very good is there anything else you would like to add No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, at this time, I would like to thank you for your service to our country. Um, and I would also like to thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to interview you today. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome.